What's up y'all? I'm out here at the range doing a bunch of jelly testing, making the most of this nice sunny day. And for this one right here, we're going to revisit some nine mil we tested last week or so, but this time we're going to shrink the barrel down on it. But y'all know the drill by now. We got the jelly contraption out here with the chrono and two blocks of gel. Now I've done one test so far in this. It was a 45 ACP 44 special test. So I'll leave a link above if y'all hadn't seen that one. And like I said, for this one, we're going back to a nine mil test we did last week with the 140 47 Ranger T Series and the 147 Federal Premium HST. Uh, here's both your rounds here. Really nice nickel plated rounds on both of them. There's your HST. Now, in that previous test, we saw absolutely fantastic performance from both of these rounds out of around a four and a half inch barrel, but this time we're shrinking it down some. So, what we're using this time is the Taurus GX4 with the three inch barrel. So, we're losing about an inch and a half a barrel. So, that should actually make a pretty decent difference in the gel. But I'm really curious to see what we get out of these heavier rounds through the shorter barrel using this cloth. I've tested both of these before out of a shorter barrel and I believe they did pretty well in bare gel. Now personally I've talked about it in the past. I probably wouldn't use 147 in this short barrel but I am curious to see how they do so let's get this stuff set up and let's check them out. All right let's check out some speeds. I'm gonna do a five round average from each one. We're gonna start with the HST first. I honestly don't remember what the speeds were from that previous test, but I'll put them in here when we get to the data part. Well, let's see what we do out of this three-incher. Got 922. 929. 934. 921 and 912 so seemed pretty consistent all but maybe the last couple let's go check that average all right so our five round average on the hst is 923 feet per second let me reset this and let's check out them t-series all right let's check out these t-series now the box velocity on these t-series is claiming 970 now obviously that's out of a longer barrel than this but and i can't remember again what those other ones were running but i'll put the info in here so let's see what this three incher can do with the t-series y'all at 905 907 913 928 and 903 so a little bit inconsistent there but and definitely a little bit slower than the hsts let's check that out all right so the five round average from our winchester ranger t-series is 911 feet per second and if y'all remember on them hsts it was 923 so you're only talking about 12 feet per second faster from those hsts i was thinking it was a little bit more but 12 feet per second faster very very close and now that i remember that other test those two were almost identical also i think they might have been single digit differences but should be real interesting to see what we get from both of these in the jail with this short barrel so let me get this reset and y'all know what time it is all right y'all it is three inches enough jelly time i'm gonna put one of each round into the jail we're gonna start with the hst first let's see i don't know what to expect out of these honestly i ain't expecting the best out of either one i'm thinking the hst is going to outperform that t-series if that t-series can't get enough speed to get them talons opened up it might be in trouble well let's see what we get with the hst y'all all right should be a nice hit let me go down there and make sure we're all right Well, so far from what I can see, I'm getting proven wrong down there. It looks like that HST did really well. We just did get a good one on that though. It started curving down, but it didn't get into the bottom down there. So we all good. Let's see if I can put this T-Series up above it. See what we get. All right. Ah, uh, I think we might've came out the side there. Let me go check.
All right, y'all, let's take a look at what we got here. Unfortunately, it went pretty much how I figured it might go. So on the bottom here, that's your HST. You can see when, as soon as it comes in, it obviously started expanding. Nice disruption, nice wound channel there, a little spiraling action going on. Carries on through this first block and stops right down there, barely right at the bottom. Like I say, it didn't get into anything on the bottom. It's just like a bubble kind of right there. And you can tell it was at the end of its travel. Just the way the little ends of that wound channel are, you can just tell, like I say, it was at the end of its travel. Now, from what I can see, it's also got some pretty nice expansion on it to be coming out of that three inch barrel. And then we come to our T-Series and this one went how I was afraid it was gonna go. It completely stayed in here. I just saw some of the gas escaping from the middle here. But as you can see, came in, no kind of expansion whatsoever. Just a straight little pencil line all the way through the first block into the second block. And I'll have to pull y'all back here in just a little bit, but it's about three quarters into this second block, turned around backwards and no kind of expansion whatsoever. So as far as our penetration, this HST down at the bottom is exactly 15 and three quarters inches. So perfect penetration on that one. And then this T-Series is all the way out here at 25 and three quarters of an inch. So like I said, definitely over penetration on that and no kind of expansion at all. Here's a little bit closer look at that HST on the very bottom. Like I said, very nice disruption there. As you can see, it wanted to curve on me, so it just barely did get caught right there. As you can see, turned a little sideways and looks like some pretty nice expansion. And then again on the top here, that's the T-Series. Nothing going on there. Carried some cloth in with it. We'll have to see here if it actually did clog up with cloth, but there it is sitting backwards. No expansion at all on it. All right, let's check out these projectiles. So pretty obvious which is which here. The HST right here, the T-Series right here. As you can see, this HST did an absolutely fantastic job. Great expansion on that thing. Now, it didn't open up as much as it did from the longer barrel. I can definitely tell from that. But still, fantastic expansion even on the lead. It wasn't just the jacket that you see a lot of times from slower moving rounds. The jacket will peel back, but a lot of times you won't get much on the lead. But right here to me and it even carried some of the cloth and just pushed it out of the way you can see there that's just absolutely fantastic performance now the t-series on the other hand it didn't fare too well on this one i was pretty much afraid of this now you can see it did flatten out i don't know y'all might not be able to tell but i can tell you for a fact it flattened out the front here but it just didn't have enough velocity or it may have clogged too much but because you can tell it's pretty clogged down in there with denim it's tightly packed so when that happens those little little points that you see from the open version, they're actually folded down inside there like an inverted fold. And if those things can't start folding out and push that cloth out and clean it out, that's what you get right there. And that's what I, what I was afraid of. And that's one of the reasons, like I say, I wouldn't personally carry this 147 in a shorter barrel like that. Now those 127 plus P pluses, those might be a different story and that might be something I need to come back and check out. But anyway, let's get us some measurements on these things. So obviously they both started at 147. This T-Series here, exactly 147. 147 on the dot from that one. The HST here is 147.6. So it picked up a little bit of cloth along the way. You can tell maybe tolerances in the manufacturing, but whatever the case, it's a little bit heavier than what it claimed. Now, as far as expansion, obviously this T-Series got none, but we'll get the base size anyway. We got 354 and 355, so apparently they're at least loading the right size projectiles for us. And then for the HST here, you got 569, 537, and 577, so some pretty nice expansion out of that HST, especially to be coming out of a short barrel. But there you have it, y'all, the 147 grain HST and Winchester T-Series. Pretty much what I expected to see here. I thought this T-Series might clog like this and not be able to open up, and that's exactly what happened. The HST, I figured it would still do good. Now, I have to say, it did a little bit better than I thought it might. So, again, the HST, I've said it time and time again, these things are absolutely fantastic rounds. In my opinion, they're probably the best of the best 9mm expanding round. 
All right, y'all, let's go wrap it up for this heavy nine mil short barrel test. Again, this went pretty much the way I figured it was going to go. Uh, I personally wouldn't run the 147s in those short three inch nines like that. Even the HST, I would fall back to a 124. Even though that 147 HSD T did a fantastic job out here, you're still basically guaranteed a good performance out of the 124. But y'all, let me know what y'all's thoughts are. Do some of y'all carry these 147s and do you carry them in a shorter barrel like a three inch like this? And after the results that you saw here today, is that something you might change your mind on? Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. If you did enjoy this video, reach down and hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you click that bell notification icon so you can hopefully get notified when I upload new stuff. Take a second, like I always ask, and check out the affiliate links down in the video description. If you shop through Amazon, hit up that storefront link down there. You'll go straight through Amazon like normal from there. It don't cost you any extra money, and anything you buy anywhere on Amazon, I get a kickback from them towards the channel. Same goes for those axle links. If you're in the market for some really nice ear pro, check out those links down there and you can save a pile of money instead of clicking straight to their site. As always, I appreciate all my range gang members and every single one of y'all out there for supporting the channel like y'all do. I got a ton of good stuff headed y'all's way, so make sure you stay on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.